So good morning and welcome aboard to our Trading Week Ahead broadcast. Coming at you live here on Saturday, April 24th, 2021. I'm Ken Calhoun and great to see so many of you here. So I know we've got both day and swing traders in the house today. Well, big turnout today. So good to see so many of you here from around the world. I'm curious, what have you been trading this past week? <laughs> Let me know, I'm curious. Type in some tickers. And in the meantime, we're going to take a look at some swing charts. I gave these to you guys earlier, the top few. So let's start off with the broad market. Broad market's been up and down, right? No surprise there. It's basically flat on the week. So we don't have a directional bias other than the long bias for the current prevailing trend. But for a short-term basis, it's an uncertain market. It's still in a strong uptrend. So there's no reason to believe that the market will crash and burn other than the Thursday drop. But Currently, we'd use 4,100. Let's use nice, even round numbers. Let's use 4,100 as support. So what that means to you as an active trader is uh, maybe a good idea. Again, all information is for educational use only. I'm not making advice. Anyway, uh, if the market loses 4,100, I'm going to scale out of my open equity positions. And if we get over 4,200, I'll scale in. So that's kind of the obvious support and resistance in the S&P for our current week. Now the VIX has been another story entirely. If you take a look at our recent VIX action, the VIX did finally climb. It was within within spitting distance of the 20 here. It was right under 20. It was like 1980 or something was the high on Thursday's market drop. But we don't want to kind of say we want to keep a long bias in the market as long as the VIX stays under 20. That's the key institutional support line that professionals are using, and so should we. So as long as the VIX stays under 20, we have a long bias market. If it flips back over 20, like it almost did on Thursday, uh, then we want to tighten up trailing stops. Let's take a look at a few charts. One I mentioned a couple weeks ago to you folks here was Yum Brands, a fast food giant. And uh, you can see the parent company of many of our favorite restaurants are currently up here right under 120. Now, personally, uh, I'm gonna wait till it gets over 120 to buy because I always anticipate reversals or stalls at nines, right? Like a 119 is where this slow down. And so that's why you should, as my stocks and commodities article says, you wanna sell right under decade values, but scale in or initiate a new position above that. So I'm gonna get in in YUM if it breaks the 120. Reopening plays, no surprise here. Our casino stocks like MGM are doing fabulously the last you know, several months here since the start of the year. Going from 30 to 42 here, MGM still looks reasonably strong. And you can see a small hammer there a few days ago. That's the right off the 50 SMA. That's a hammer after a small pullback downtrend. The 50 SMA confirmed support is moving up to new highs here. We still have a shooting star to contend with here, so I don't want to get long until we break. I'm going to round up to 44. So I'm going to look for MGM. I'm going to buy MGM if it breaks over 44. I'm going to stay clear till then. I'm just going through a handful of swing charts. We're also going to look at day trading charts in just a minute. Yeah, and keep typing in those tickers. Let me know what you folks are following. I'd like to hear. Oh, you're starting to see some already. Oh, quite a few. All right, thanks, folks. I will type in some of those stickers towards the end of the <clears throat> toward the end of today's broadcast. Anyway, and no worries, no sales pitch today. I'm just trying to give you some good content. Uh, Freeport McMoran looks really good. Copper and steel are both good. X and CLF are also okay for steel. FCX is good for copper, and it, it's still in a congestion box here, so. Uh, 30 to 40 is the range, right? 30 to 40 is major support right near the 30 here, major resistance right near 40. So this would be a play long if it gets over the 40, but we don't want to fool around with it inside a chop zone. I don't know about y'all, but one challenge I often have is I overtrade charts that I really like. And the, the good part of successful trading is being much more patient, uh, more easy going or patient before we put on the trade. So we do want to wait for it to confirm a new high breakout. And the reason is that's the price that'll attract new buyers. So for that reason, 
It's on the radar, but it's in a holding pattern up here until it breaks north of 40, and that's FCX. Now, a couple of pop and drop type charts that look especially appealing are this FSL and all things cannabis. And I'm just picking Tilray as my favorite pot stock, or one of my favorite pot stocks, that and Canopy Growth and ACV. Uh, but these charts that have had a tremendous speculative run up, it was two or three dollars a share, then it ran up to 30. And you can see again, the bearish engulfing no Buddha, no, with the bearish engulfing at the top. And as you can see, it did exactly what I always publish and tell you folks, uh, it reversed right under the decade value, right at the nine. So that's why I say never buy nines. You sell nines, you play it within the decade. You go long above, say that you buy in a 21, 22, you sell up at the 28, 29. You buy at the 11 or 12 and you sell up to the 19 or 20. Right, so playing within the decade values is a good time-honored approach that I pioneered for a lot of the intro for some of the swing trading charts. And anyway, what I like about this chart for a potential bounce next week, FCEL, is that it is right at the 10. And again, that's a very good <clears throat> process. If you've got, how to say, if you've got background in business improvement, you know that we always look to kind of flow chart out core business processes and how do we do things? How do we build a better mousetrap? And what's the and how do we build consistency and value into our trading? And the way that I like to do that is to have rules that I follow most of the time. Not 100 percent I'm human like everyone else, but I do have hard and fast rules and guidelines. And one thing that I like is what I call buying into previous strength, meaning it has a proven track record that people are willing to pay all the way up to 30 bucks for the share for it a few weeks ago. Then they crash and burn back down to below a mean reversion pivot right to the 200 simple moving average line that it formed here near 10. So for that reason, we have a nice big solid green candle, a bullish engulfing at the low right. And for candles, be sure to learn exclusively from Steve Nissen at candlecharts.com. No one else is qualified to teach candles the way Steve is. is the world foremost authority. He's the go-to guy, right? Just like I'm the go-to guy for a lot of these intraday and swing strategies. Anyway, learn from people who know what they're talking about. It makes life easier. Anyway, uh, what I like about this as a setup for a bounce trade is that it's uh, between the 10 and 20. It's in the early stages of a potential cycle back up to the high teens, right? Would not surprise me to see this thing at least flip up to 15, right? It's like, you got to give me 15. So I'll buy this maybe over, right over 11. Well, it depends on how it opens on Monday, but I usually wait until uh, midweek to put on swing, so at least Tuesday. So. The play would be, and again, not a trade recommendation, but long F cell once it breaks 11. Protective stop would be no further down than, say, nine. I always like to use, say, a $2 or a two-day low protective stop. You know, a big swoosh up. Then it crashed and burned. And now it's starting to bounce. Now, these were preliminary kind of dead cap bounces. They didn't really hold. What we want to see is, does this guy hold and get at least three, four, five, six days a week or so on a, on a swing trading bounce? So F cell, that's a good play. When you're looking for recovery plays, by the way, that's what I teach in the live room for swing trades. One of the many strategies we cover, one of the things that you really want to look for is a clean wide range, meaning many points range chart. The same exact pattern would be completely worthless in my, well, not, not useful to trade if say the trading range were say $5 on the bottom end and $8 on the top and it's pulled back down to seven. And this chopping around, that's no good. What you want is something with extreme, in this trader's market, and it is a trader's market, you want extreme, you know, rock star charts that have big ranges and very clean, sharp, in focus directional price patterns instead of chop and turn, because that's very difficult to navigate. So at least it's frustrating to me to, to try and trade choppy charts. So I find the cleaner and more focused chart, the better and easier it is to trade. And the main reason is your risk management and your position sizing all make sense. So here's a quick question. Riddle me this. Riddle me this. For those of you who remember the original Batman with Adam West, if we go long over 11, where would you scale in? Let's say we buy just a couple hundred shares, I don't know, say three, 400 shares to get the party started at 11.20. That would be a likely trigger point that I would use to buy. Where would you double down? Where would you scale in? And by the way, you should always add to winning trades and always scale out of losing trades, right? You don't have to give up the whole position, but do scale out on drops. And on pops, when things are running up, 
you always want to scale in. So if we buy right over 11, where would you guys scale in? Let me know. Give me, uh, please type in an answer within the next, you know, five or 10 seconds. Hey, Damon. Hey, Jorge. You are correct. Hey, Jana. Hey, Paul. Hey, Charles. Hey, Fred. I'm saying 13, 15, 17, 13, 12, 10. Uh, the thirteens have it, even though thirteen's not an especially lucky number. That doesn't really matter to trades. Every two dollars for these cheap charts under fifty bucks, especially down under thirty dollars, every two dollars makes sense. So if I buy eleven twenty, I might buy say thirteen twenty, and then again fifteen twenty. So every two dollars, kind of like a stair step on the way up, you want to scale in. Let's think about it. If you'd only traded say hundred shares there, and maybe you sold up here, yeah, you might would have made a thousand bucks. But if you bought a hundred shares here double down here double down there and then sold up there you'd be up closer to 2000 so you could have made a lot more money uh, had you potentially had you traded by adding the winning trades now that kind of begs the question again trade management is much more important than simple chart patterns trade management meaning your upfront risk and how you scale and position size in and out of your trades kind of threading the eye of the needle that's a much more important skill set to become aware of and get you know hopefully better at than is simply looking at magic chart patterns the chart patterns and technical analysis and price action are absolutely vital and critical but the other half of that is trade management and how you manage risk on the front end so uh, we'll look at some examples in just a minute but that's you should always think about adding to winning trade now having said that i will say that you don't need to double the position you can just add incrementally let's say you buy 200 shares Maybe you just uh, feed the kitty, right? Buy another 50 or 100 shares, uh, two, $2 up. Then another 50 or 100 shares, another $2 up. And that's a, also a good conservative way to scale in. Uh, you, what you don't want to do is the opposite. You don't want to like start with, say, 200 shares and then add 400 shares in Martingale uh, immediately. You want to either use the same, your, your same share size or do a smaller share size increment. And that's, that often helps traders overcome. What I found in coaching so many thousands of traders is that helps overcome the fear of, uh, well, am I going to buy the top because I'm scaling in you know, later than my first trade? Well, to reduce that concern, and I hear you because I, I face that myself, uh, scale in smaller. So maybe you start off with you know, 200 shares, and then the next trade at over 13 is 100 shares, and then the next trade over 15 is another 100. So you're feeding it incrementally, like feeding it breadcrumbs. So. But do add to your winning trades because that's uh, my most profitable days, weeks, months, and years, and so forth is uh, thanks to position sizing and scaling. It's really important. Here's another somewhat similar chart pattern in Tilray, one of the pot stocks. And you can see it ran all the way from just under 10 up to 60 ish and then came back down here to 15. Where it makes sense to start putting on, I mean, you can fool around with it down here. But what, what dollar figure jumps out to you on this chart? Is it a price above which uh, would probably inspire confidence from other traders and would make sense to start trading? Looks like we closed it around, I want to say 16, around $17 a share. Right, Tim, John, and Jorge, yeah, you're right. Right over the 20, right? So that's a nice round number. Remember, remember the decade approach. You know, you buy right over a 10, you sell right under, or at least tighten up a stop right under 20. And in this chart, the 20 happens to be the same as the really important, very valuable, more valuable than the 50 is the 100 simple moving average line. And so the 100 SMA coincides with and confirms 20. So that would be an institutional signal that professional traders would be looking at. That's not to say you don't want to trade it down here at 17 or 18 bucks a share, but that's kind of late in the, in the range from 10 to 20. So we want to kind of start a new chapter or new episode and get in right over the 20, right? So over 20 makes sense, right? You can fool around with it down here and that's fine. There's no, no shame. I'm in a little, a few shares long, about a bit, but I'm not gonna start scaling until it starts to break over 20. And you have similar chart patterns in the other cannabis and many other stocks uh, like Canopy Growth. You pull up CGC, NC here. Now this one, we don't have to wait for the 32. Again, the decade approach, the rule of tens. It's 
sometimes mercifully because this is a real error to get right. Simple is good. So here we would want to get in just like with the uh, Tilray over the 20 here, canopy growth is one of the best of the, if not the best of the cannabis stocks, uh, or at least one of the best blue chip uh, type in that industry, somewhere over 30. So I'm gonna start, I'm in a few shares that I bought earlier this week, but I'm not gonna start scaling significantly until we get over 30. Then I'll probably scale in again over 34. And well, I probably won't buy right over 32 because that's a little too close, the volatility in this chart. So I may buy 30, then I'll buy over 34, then again, uh, up at new highs if it breaks 40. Anyway, that's a good example of a recovery type play where something runs up, comes back down. It's still underwater until it breaks this previous peak. So if we get over the 30, have at it and see if it rips back up. Now let's take a look at a couple of, uh, our, I'm running over time. Not running over time yet, but I'm, <laughs> I only have a little bit of time left with you folks. Uh, we're gonna look at day trading charts momentarily, but the last three to look at are three of my favorite ETFs, exchange traded funds. The home builders one is people are moving en masse out of big cities and into the suburbs. Uh, home builders have been especially strong. This is one that we've been mentioning for you folks for quite a few months, and you can see it's uh, doubled in value from the 30s up to over doubled from 30s to 74 here. So the home builders ETF XHB is an especially good candidate anywhere over 76, right? That makes sense. In line with that are lumber ETF cut, like what you do to wood, cut it. Uh, it went ran from 20 to 38. Now, quick question on this chart, where would be a buy? Where would you buy cut? Where makes sense? Hint, it's not here. <laughs> where would make sense given what I taught you about? The, and again, test out my strategies for yourself and you'll see why they've been so popular with so many uh, traders. If they're simple, uh, they're effective, they're ones that traders like, and uh, they're easy to understand. And there's no ambiguity, unlike a lot of people that have a lot of squiggly lines on their charts and, well, the VWAP is doing this, the MACD and the Stochastic is doing that, and blah, 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 blah. We're price action traders. It's all about the money. <laughs> Quote me on that. Right. Yeah, Damon, Tom, Jenna, Jorge, others, yeah, right over the 40. So remember, we, this may be a tempting chart because it looks really strong, but yet in the back of your mind, you should have the red flag, Don't that, thou shalt not buy nines, right? So that, we don't buy a 39, but we do buy right over 40 because it's getting, it's a mature trade. It's up near a likely sell target. And again, a lot of this stuff is in a self-fulfilling prophecy because I and maybe others too have taught this to so many tens of thousands of traders over the decades. Uh, it becomes kind of <laughs> trading lore out there and everybody understands it. Here's another really good example, SPXL or S&P leveraged long ETF. You can see it's right under the 100. Again, don't buy nines, right? And what did it do at 99? It stalled and dropped at exactly 99. So behold the power and the profit potential of what I teach. And then the validity, how to say, you look for reliability, consistency, validity, Check that out on, on your favorite charts. Make sure that whoever you're learning from isn't like cherry picking charts. Just randomly look at any 15 or 20 charts and see for yourself the power of don't buy nines, but buy right over the decade. So this would make sense. I wouldn't buy the 100, but I'd buy the 101. So slightly above in case there's a false breakout in the first dollar. Well, let's switch our attention now to our day trading charts. Biden says big capital gains tax, bum, 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 boom, boom. And then the street says, eh, no big deal. Now, one play that you may be aware of that I've taught for many years is uh, reversals, uh, the end of day squeeze, right? Things <laughs> often spike up during the last half hour of the market if they've been selling down. So if you're in something that goes up and it comes down, I bought this, right? I think it was right over the 26 and a half, right? 26.57 or something like that being a wise ass, but that's where I pulled the trigger. The only trade in this was right over there and boom, started to run. We'll see if it runs up. If something is sold off all day long, oftentimes, who do you think wants to buy uh, buy shares at the end of the day uh, after something sold off? It would be shorts who want to cover their shorts. So you get a short squeeze pop 
oftentimes during the last half hour. So that's one of many strategies I teach in the live room is looking for late in the day pivots after a big after a big sell-off day. And if we're looking for upside momentum plays, I like charts like this one I covered for our members yesterday, MVIS. It was a really big winner for us. I gave multiple alerts to the long side and it ran all the way up until one o'clock until it slowed down and reversed back a bit, kind of a pullback, but really good open range breakout. Now remind, just remember, a reminder. We want to go long over whole numbers, right? I always use a whole number strategy. Always expect that they will sell the nine, like the 14.9. There is, there's Kowloon with his nines again. Well, more power to us, right? Because it works. So we don't buy right under whole numbers. That's a really stupid place to buy. We buy 20 or 30 cents above a whole number, right? Or above the midpoint. Anyway, so we have a cup pattern on a two day high breakout, and that's a long trigger. And up, up, and away, it runs. Another good one from yesterday, OCGN. It was up and then it was down, right? Illustrates the importance of using trailing stops. We had an up move here, and I think 920, yeah, 920 was, if I do say so myself, that was a pretty good pivot call. Now, I issued that alert to our members yesterday, even, if it, even as it was down near nine, and that's because of my whole number strategy. Let me double check here. Yeah, our long call is 920, and I told them to sell it all at 1080. So we didn't get the tail end of the run, but we got over a dollar, you know, paper trading this on the move to the upside. This is what my members get each day. <clears throat> I updated throughout the session, but when, so for example, live when this was down at nine, I said, okay, let's go long right over the whole number at 920. And do the math. How much money could you have made if you traded the 920? And I said, why do you, any, any volunteers, why do you think I told everyone that we want to sell the 10.8? And ultimately kept going up further, and that's fine. It's a, don't worry about it though, it was over a dollar and a half winning call. <clears throat> the reason was, why? Why did, as it was slowing down up here near 11, hint, I said we sell the 1080. And again, the reason is previous high. That's the exit target, exit target for a pivot day trade. This started the day off as a gap up and looked really good up until it didn't. And then it sold and crashed and burned, boom. Bounced off the whole number. So I said, let's go long folks at 920. And my live room members, my trading open live room were thrilled because it shot on up nicely and it slowed down then it shot up again. And I told them in real time, let's sell it all here at 1080 because you know it could have easily kept going back down again following the first leg down. So that was a long trigger at 920 because of the whole number. And this was the sell target right under the previous high, which coincidentally not, was also a whole number. So that was a good round trip on that guy. In the MVIS chart, what was my long call? 1440. So that was right above the previous high. That's another strategy you might want to consider is make sure that you can see your pre-market charts. It's not optional it's absolutely critical for successful day trading you've got to see where we're coming from right so you can see where we're going so a breakout right above the previous high here was where i said we want to go along at 14.4 in market and that was a nice winner so and where did i say to sell 17. so yeah right under the 17. we didn't get this last leg we just got the first two two dollar run or a dollar and a half run or whatever so good play these are the kind of charts you want to day trade, charts with multi-point ranges. The really stupid charts to day trade are charts under $10, the random gappers that are pop and droppers without any history. Those are really foolish and risky. And anybody who claims to trade those successfully, let me see your tax return proof, your $48.98, and you won't see it because the people advocating under $10 stocks, you know, good luck with those. I mean, this one I called long on the way up and it worked. It ran all the way from four to 580, but it was it didn't run till after 11 o'clock uh, and a, a much riskier play than things like the MVIS and OCGN. This one was good yesterday. One of my members had asked about TITR. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna pull up some charts for you guys too. You guys have mentioned some charts. So 
let's take a look. Anyway, if you're interested in trading these types of charts, I urge you to join my live room. Let's see, question from Tom. I don't look at the prior day post market. No, no, that's how I always get that question, but the aftermarket's not nearly as important as the pre market. So uh, I just focus on the pre market because the reason for that is the aftermarket often changes overnight, right? And so it doesn't give me good intel in terms, unless, uh, well, I will, I want to say, I will modify that to say I may scale in aftermarket or scale out uh, during the hour or two aftermarket if I'm swing trading something. Yeah, so yeah, I do, I will look at the aftermarket charts. Let's see, questions from traders. Let's see, uh, Kaz is asking what's the chart sound? Wow, a lot of questions. I use e-signal charts. We're almost out of time, but let me, let me pull up a few charts here. Let me know if you, they're for day or swings. For swing trades, it's always a good idea, at least as you may have seen my stocks and commodities articles, to look for charts that are above the prior day's high. So for example, Palantir, and we've covered this in the live room multiple times because it's been a pretty good day trading chart for swing trading and wait for it to break over say 23.7. But yeah, it's the bullish cup ascending triangle on the right side. So pretty healthy chart. See someone's asking about Conagra, I think, CAG. I wouldn't touch that with a 10 foot pole because there's not enough range to it. This is a really good example of what not to trade, CAG. It's choppy as heck. It doesn't have much range. It doesn't have a discernible trend. It's been up a little bit lately, but there's not enough range. I mean, you know, why would I trade that when I could trade something like that instead, right? You want nice, tight, clean, uptrending charts. But uh, thanks for asking though. It's, it's always good to learn from, which charts are worth a shot and which ones aren't? Any other tickers? I think that's it. I had a bunch of them earlier. Hey, I know, let's see, food, F-O-O-D. That's not a valid ticker. Let's see, Micron. Taiwan Semi, let's take a look. Micron, I wouldn't touch it till it breaks 100, personally. It looks like it's kind of done stick a fork in a resistance at 96. I might short, again, not a trade recommendation, I'd short a loss of the 80. I wouldn't buy it till, say, 101. Our semis have not been especially strong since the start of the year, right? So the semiconductor sector is junk right now, despite the long term growth prospects and all the rest of it they've they've reached such high valuations we've seen a lot of tech and growth has been pulled back this year right we have rotation out of fang and some of the other tech sectors and uh, so for that reason i wouldn't be looking at uh, any of the semis let's see american airlines that one should be okay i think our airlines are yeah it's just okay though that, I'd give it maybe a B minus rating, so it's it's not as strong a chart as I'd like. I know historically Southwest has been much better trender. So I don't like American Airlines for airline stocks, but I do like Southwest, ticker love. That's a chart I can get my, my arms around, right? I'd go in long over 66. Now, the American Airlines, though, is choppy. So you want to go with the dominant player. And Southwest clearly has a superior chart pattern. Higher highs and higher lows. Does that make sense? When you're looking for echo, stop the madness. Anyway, our time's about up. Let's see another one. Neo, yeah, we cover it. Neo, also I know, curiously enough, uh, palindromically. Neo, maybe a pivot over the 46 or so, but again, it hasn't pulled back enough and it's still in a descending triangle. So uh, may light it up it's tentatively over 45 and aggressively over 50 but it's still a pullback descending chart. So for that reason, I just say no. Neo's fine for day trades, by the way. We often cover that in the live room for intraday trades, uh, but not so much for swings. A couple last ones here. 
And then, by the way, I do cover charts of people's choice in the live room. And please make sure you give me a working ticker, not some random four letters that don't have anything. Well, that's an interesting chart. That would probably be good for day trades, right? TCAT. Yeah, this would be much more suitable for a day than a swing trade. But yeah, I'll keep that one on my radar for Monday for us because that's got the range and it's got the look I like. It's got a double cup, kind of like a cup and handle breakout to the upside, right? We'll be interested if it breaks 36. Now, on the other hand, so it'd be good for day trading, but this kind of chart personally I would not be looking at for a swing trade because the risk is too big. Right, the risk is extremely likely that if we buy 36 or 37, it crashes and burns back down to 20. And I don't know about y'all, but I do not want to risk 10 or $15 overnight in a single trade. So some charts are good for day trades like this guy, but are completely unsuitable for swing trades because the variance, the, the risk management is out of whack. The risk reward number still makes sense. So yeah, it's tradable, but only for intraday. See someone asking about UPST. Let's take a look. I'll cover a few more tickers. I'm happy to give you my honest thoughts on tradability. And that's really important. When you're looking for successful trades, think of it like trying to find an employee. You want people that are honest and hardworking. That one actually has pretty appealing, interesting range to it. What it doesn't have is a consistent trend. So I think there's better candidates out there. Like, why would I swing trade that one when I could swing trade this one instead? Kind of like Newton's, I forgot which law, but a body in motion tends to stay in motion unless acted on by an outside force. The force of the buyers and a consistent trend makes for a more appealing chart. And a lot of it's self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, if you're like me, you know, you got lots of capital and you're trying to figure out where to throw it. Uh, you want to throw it at things that are likely to keep going up. And so charts that have random haphazard sideways chart price action are not nearly as appealing as charts that have a consistent uptrend because those inspire more confidence both on the part of professional money managers as well as us retail traders hey jim thanks man and DraftKings is probably good too thanks Harry. yeah it's pulling back so not so much it looks like it's done its thing till 75. If I were long, I'd stop out under, I'd give it till 50 at the lowest, but more likely I'd start scaling out of 53 and be all cash at 50. I wouldn't scale in in this guy because it's it's not as consistent. If we look at, let's see our other gaming stocks. Now, yeah, wind's not too good. Las Vegas Sands is choppy as heck. Caesar, Caesar. Now that's a chart. That, that's when I could get, get my arms around over 110. So Caesars, a little pricey, but look at the range. It was 20 bucks a share. Now it's almost 100. So Caesars Entertainment, one of the casino stocks, and MGM is better. Uh, those are the two best gaming stocks, just like Southwest is the best of the airline stocks and, and, uh, Air, and American, not so much. That's what Delta looks like. Yeah, Delta is kind of in the middle. Reopening plays, they were up and down with Carnival Cruise Lines. You may want to keep Carnival on the radar if it breaks, say, 32 or so later, but it's not as strong an uptrender. You always want to give preference to charts that have good, strong momentum and good, strong directional volatility that inspires new buyers up at new highs consistently. You know, one of the, I don't know if you, you, you folks have the same experience as me, but uh, for the longest time, it's hard to build consistency in your trades. And what I found made a big difference, at least in my own personal trading, is give preference to charts that are likely to attract new buyers, not only in the face of it, but mainly based on the price action and how strong they are, so. Okay, well, I'm gonna wrap up. We're a few minutes over. Thank you very much. Let's see a question from Jorge. Let's see, how do I, do, how do I identify a trend early? The main thing is, does it hold? And that's a very smart question. That's a brilliant question. How do you identify a trend early rather than late? Uh, it's all about the two-day chart pattern. So, for example,
that's a really healthy chart for either day or swing trade. So something that's how to say the way that you identify a trend that's likely to continue is the closing price is above the previous day's high in a current uptrend. So for example, here. Now if this had ended up here, I wouldn't be interested in it. But since it closed up at a high, and you can see aftermarket it was up at 41.40. So aftermarket is up there. Something like this that closes above the prior day's high, by definition, is in an uptrend. And preferably a chart like this, where it's a nice steady uptrend. This would be good for a swing trade. It's just okay for a day trade. The range isn't great on it for a day trade, but for a swing trade, this is the kind of chart pattern you want, where it's in a two-day directional uptrend. The range isn't extreme, like that one chart, the TCAT, that had you know, like an eight-point range, uh, and it's got a steady, consistent move to the upside, and significantly it closes near the high on the two-day chart uh, above the previous day's high. But yeah, it's a, it's a smart question, so appreciate it. A lot of you here. Let's see a question from Goran about a repost any tickers. I'll stick around a few more minutes. I'll... What else do I have to do on a Saturday morning? And a really big turnout today. So Snap was kind of all over the map yesterday. Um, it's overall it's directionally strong, right? But personally, I don't like this one for a swing trade. I, I like it for day trading. We looked at it for yesterday uh, for intraday trades, but it's it's kind of all over the map. So kind of a random haphazard chart. It is tradable though, because the range and the volume is there. What's difficult and tricky, and I think I posted this, I think my long alert on this was like 60.7. And I said, use a break even stop on the pivot and that didn't work out. It just kind of fell back down It lifted up a little bit into the, the close but didn't have the consistency of a chart like this right this by the way is another really fine example uh, TIGR one of my members had mentioned this one yesterday uh, of a good two-day high breakout it broke out above the 20 ran all the way to 21 and that's a good range to trade with in his whole numbers or you could have traded early 19 to the 20 and then 20 to the 21 so one kind of a parting thought is whenever you're looking at your charts The most important thing to look at is the previous day's high. And then once you identify the previous day's high and you know to go long above that, you also look at the whole numbers. And you know, if you traded 19 to 20, that's okay. The ideal trade here though would be between the 20 and the 21. To get in long right above the 20 and then tighten up a trailing stop as it travels its way up to 21 and sell it all off at the end of the day for a nice healthy profit. This is also a really good chart for a swing trade if it takes out you know, 2120 or 2130 or higher uh, in the upcoming week ahead because it's in a directional move to the upside. So maybe early in a trend uh, and it did close at a two day high. So kind of long story short, that's a key thing to look for is did, did it close at the previous, did it close at a two day high? Meaning a high above the current day and the prior day. And if it did close at a two day high, that's both a good chart to scale into if you're already in swing trading to, to buy more shares into the close or to initiate a new swing trade on the day, you know, say next week if it breaks 2120 and continues on its merry way up. So anyways, I'm going to wrap up. Hey, thanks, Jim. Saying thanks, Ken. Always great to join you on Saturday as well. Good to have you here, man. Appreciate it. And you too, Damon. Take care and stay safe. You folks, uh, stay safe. Do take care and I will endeavor to answer more chart questions and tickers in our next broadcast coming up next Saturday. In the meantime, do bop on over to my site at trademastery.com. Hopefully it's all working this morning now after a lot of tech work um, and register for the live room, my trading open live room at trademastery.com. And I'll see you guys next week. And by the way, some of the best charts of the day for our day trading room uh, and swing trading room uh, come from our members, right? Because we have lots of eyes and ears of people that have been with me for many, many years. And so they all know what to look for. And so having a lot of smart, focused people there is my pleasure. That's something I really, really enjoy and appreciate. My favorite part about running my live room is picking up ideas from other traders. And that's an another good reason to join the community is uh, I echo out what people say in terms of picks and everything. So. Anyway, y'all take care, and I will see you next week. Trade smart. Be safe out there, and I'll see you in a, our next.
broadcast echo stop my amazon device thought i was talking to anyway you guys take care and trade smart i will see you next time join the live room it's only 29 bucks money back guarantee for a couple of weeks so you can try it and see if it's your cup of tea it has been for many thousands of traders since i first started it nearly low these 21 years ago so uh, it's great to see you all here so join the live room if you wish and i will see you in uh, either in the live room on monday or i'll see you next saturday so take care and bye for now